Now, it's Lunchtime with Ira, live from the Las Vegas Hilton. Uh, starting off the show is an interview that I conducted recently with uh, song icon and musical icon Tony Bennett. Tony, you've been an enduring part of American music, and particularly the Great American Songbook, for a long time, many, many decades. Thank you. Uh, and I'd like to know, from your point of view, who represents, in terms of uh, either a songwriting or a lyricist, uh, the best of it? Is it George and Ira Gershwin? Is it uh, Cole Porter, Dorothy Fields? Uh, who, who represents it from your perspective of performing these great songs? Boy, that, that, that's, that's a tough question. I would say Cole Porter was the greatest one as far as talent, you know, as far as intelligence. I mean, he wrote words and music, and he wrote it. He wrote it so well, so well that you can't believe how magnificent a creative composer lived like Cole Porter. But then again, it was a Renaissance area. You had you mentioned Dorothy Fields, who was the only lady that composed in those days of the whole group. But then you had Arthur Swartz, you know, had, and, and, and Dietz and Swartz, and and, uh, and and Johnny Mercer. But then you had George and Ira Gershwin. Ira was such a great lyricist, beside Gershwin being such a magnificent genius, and Duke Ellington. And it was, I'll tell you what it is. I spent my life doing those songs, and throughout from year to year, every executive at record companies would say, you're not doing new songs. And I say, no, they, uh, they said that they're, they're, they're old songs. I said, they're not old, they're great. And what I was really trying to tell them is that without waving a flag in the United States, that Renaissance period from the 20s, 30s, and 40s created the greatest popular music that was ever written on the face of the earth. There's nothing that can match it. I'm absolutely convinced that 35 years or 50 years from now, that that music will not be called popular music, it will be called America's classical music, just like you would say Mozart or, or you, know, you know, Puccini or, or Bach or, Beethoven or Brahms, someday you'll say, I'm, su I'm sure that the, the world will say the greatest music of popular music that was ever written was written in the United States. And it came out of this one group of people that just would, who knows why it started or what, how it was created, but it was beautiful. It was just like at the turn of the centuries in the French, at the turn of the century, you know, you had Ravel and Debussy and Tchaikovsky, and, but then you had painters like uh, Monet and Van Gogh and, uh, and Sisley and, and Gauguin and all these, these great ones. And it was a period that happens to a certain country. And that music never goes away, no matter how modern music gets, you still, or paintings, let's say, like you see Monet, to this day you look at a Monet painting and say, my God, look at how beautiful that is. Well, it's the same thing with George Gershwin and Jerome Kern and Johnny Mercer from Savannah, Georgia, who was magnificent, and uh, Ia Parberg and Harold Allen, who was a great jazz composer, great, greatest jazz composer that ever lived was Harold Allen with Ia Parberg writing lyrics, who is just my favorite, is the greatest lyric writer. And I'm still, I, I look at a song, uh, uh, Rogers and Hart, you know, or the Rogers and Hammerstein, and I just say, look what they wrote. Just look what they wrote. There's none better. They, 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 were, they all had a great gift that you, you can't learn in college. Either you got it or you haven't got it when it comes to composing. And they all, it was a group that just knew that they had it and they all exchanged ideas and, and had uh, jam sessions, you know, where they got together and showed each other what they were writing and, 
And it was a great period of, of music, the best. Fred Astaire introduced almost all of those songs. And uh, he's very much a part of the American Songbook also. When you were, well, you had two, two heroes, uh, one uh, or two idols, uh, Bing Crosby and Nat King Cole. When you were looking at them, could you ever uh, conceive at that point that you would be in those footsteps so many decades later? No. Uh, I, I just loved it, but uh, I, I can't believe how many beautiful things have happened to me in my life, you know, from where I started from and the way I'm treated now, it's just, uh, it's, it's a blessing. I'm, I have a charm life. I think we all think you do, and we're glad yeah. for it. Thank you. We, we do have a, I, one last question, because I know you have to go, but because of your association, not only in the world of music, but in the world of Las Vegas, what one Las Vegas memory stands out for you of all of the years that you've been performing here in Las Vegas? Well, wow, that's a good question. <laughs> there, was a, there was a concert I did at the Sahara Hotel that was recorded. And eventually it'll come out. It's a, a wonderful recording, and it was just one of those great nights where uh, the music was right and the artists that were in the audience were right, Mickey Rooney got up on stage and it was a small stage so when he got up and it, it was comical the way he climbed up on stage and he said I know he says I he says you know he says I know you're laughing because I'm short he says I'm 300,000 short he was talking about all of his voices you know? <laughs> and, uh, there was, there, was a, there were a lot of great days in Vegas many many great days well thank you very much Tony for being on lunchtime with Ira thank you very much